welcome to First Chapter Friday. I'm Karen from the Sparks Library. Today, in honor of Black History Month, I'm going to read to you from the book, What Color Is My World? The Lost History of African American Inventors. It was written by Kareem Abdul-Jabbar and published by Candlewick Press in 2012. Yes, Kareem is a famous basketball player, but he's also many other things. And one of those things is he's a writer. It says back here, the NBA's all-time leading scorer, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, is one of the most accomplished basketball players in U.S. history. He is also a New York Times best-selling author of seven books. Since retiring from basketball, he has been busy writing, making films, and speaking around the world about how different cultures can learn from one another. He is dedicated to bringing history and social studies to children across the globe using basketball as the language that unites them. This is his second book with his co-author Raymond Opsfeldt. Both authors live in California. Chapter one, you've got to use your imagination, Mama encouraged us. That's what adults always say when something looks really awful, but they want you to say something nice anyway. Mama smiled weakly and waited for us to say something nice and waited. More waiting. Finally, my twin sister Ella shook her head. My imagination must be low on batteries because all I can see is some creepy old house out of some horror movie. Thank you, Ella, Mama frowned. Then she turned to me. What do you think, Herbie? It's great, Mama. Very, uh, roomy. Ella stood behind Mama and made an exaggerated kissing face at me. But the truth was, I kind of liked the old place. I stomped my foot on the wooden porch. Solid, I said, and Mama smiled. Kirby, Ella sang, I am the ghost of losers past. We welcome you to our ranks. Mama ignored Ella and gestured up the house. It's got three bedrooms upstairs, so you'll each have your own room. That'll be a nice change, huh? Ella actually perked up at that. I won't have to smell his skanky socks after basketball practice. And I won't have to listen to your dumb phone calls. Knock, knock, a voice said from behind us. Mama turned and smiled. Roger, you're early. We've got a lot of work ahead of us, ma'am. That's the truth, Mama said. You have the list of what I need to pick up? Right here. He pulled out a long handwritten list from the top pocket of his bib overalls and handed it to Mama. Kids, this is Mr. Meidel. He's a handyman Dad and I met at church. Roger Edward Meidel, he said, offering his hand. We shook it and told him our names. His hand was rough and calloused, like Dad's. Even though Dad worked as an executive in a bank, with a big metal desk and an assistant, and wore suits and ties and shiny shoes. He still liked to work with his hands on weekends. You two will help Mr. Meidel while I go get more supplies. She whistled at the list. A lot of supplies. It'll all be worth it, Mr. Meidel said. You'll see. Mom nodded, still staring at the long list. Walk me to the car, she told Ella and me. When we got to the car, she said, you do what Mr. Meidel says, you hear me? We are lucky to have him. Ella patted Mama's shoulder. Relax, Mama. Mama locked eyes with Ella. I mean it, girl. When Mama's car was out of sight, we turned toward the house and there was Mr. Meidel. I take it you two are less than thrilled with your new home. Mr. Meidel had a well-worn hammer in the loop of his overalls. He smelled like the peppermint tea Mama always drinks when she gets home from work. She's a middle school principal. Not at the school Ella and I go to, thank goodness. We were hoping for something newer, Ella said. 
like the Covent Garden Homes they're building over on Draper Street. They have a community pool. And a hot tub, I added, and tennis courts. New isn't necessarily better, Mr. Meidel said. If you look closely at this place, you'll see some exquisite craftsmanship. They walked into the house. But you won't see a pool, Ella said. Mr. Meidel laughed. Nope. But you'll see something else. Hepatitis? History. Many people worked across the centuries to make a house like this. This house is the culmination of all human progress. Sounds crowded, Ella said with a snort. Sounds like a museum, I said. Oh, it is, Mr. Meidel nodded. A museum is a celebration of achievement. Your parents' achievement in providing a home for their family, but also a celebration of the history of humankind, the history of America, and the history of African Americans. Ella laughed. African Americans? Unless this was a station on the Underground Railroad, I don't see any African American history. She cupped her hands and shouted up the stairs. Dr. King, are you up there watching TV with Harriet Tubman? Ella, I said, nudging her. Knock it off. There's more to our history than slavery, jazz, sports, and civil rights marches. We know that, Ella said, getting sore. Do you know a lot of African-American scientists? Mr. Meidel asked. Ella looked at me. Come on, genius, Ella whispered to me. Name some black scientists. I'm sure I'd read about a few, but I couldn't remember a lot of names. Finally, I said, George Washington Carver. The peanut guy, Ella said with a triumphant look. Amazing man, Mr. Meidel agreed. They called him the Black Leonardo after Leonardo da Vinci. Who else you got on that list? Ella and I looked at each other. Then we shrugged. Mr. Meidel walked over to the wall and flipped the light switch. Overhead, a bare light bulb burst ablaze with light. Who invented the light bulb, he asked. Thomas Edison, I said. You going to tell us he was black, Ella said. It was a trick question, Mr. Meidel said. No one invented the light bulb. What? Ella and I said at the same time. Oh, Edison had a lot to do with bringing us the light bulb, but no one invents anything, not by themselves. Then how come all the history books are filled with names of inventors, I asked. It's easier for people to remember one name and easier for teachers to test you on those names. In truth, all inventors only improve on what's come before. They should be called innovators rather than inventors. See, inventing is like standing in a bucket brigade. People stand in a line that stretches from a water source to a fire, and they pass buckets of water up the line. The last person in line throws the water on the fire and gets all the credit for putting out the fire. Inventors are like the people in that line, each one contributing, but the one who throws the water gets the credit as the inventor. I pulled out the blank journal tucked into my back pocket and started scribbling what he said. I even drew a bucket brigade. My whole life is in my journals. I have more than 400 of them, all stacked neatly in my bookcase in chronological order from the time I was five. Sir Isaac Newton once said, the apple proves gravity guy, Ella said. Right, he said. If, quote, if I had seen farther than others, it is by standing on the shoulders of giants, end quote. Meaning that whatever he achieved is because of what he learned from all the great scientists that came before him. So, what does the light bulb have to do with African Americans, Ella asked. The edge had gone from her voice. Mr. Meidel grinned. Ever heard of Louis Latimer? We shook our heads. Let me ask you this. What color is electricity? He flicked the light bulb on and off. I thought for a second. White? 
It's yellow, Ella scoffed. Lightning looks white when it flashes, I reminded her. Yeah, well, I don't think that this electricity, Mr. Mitel interrupted, is black. Black? Ella and I said at the same time. We both stared at the light bulb. You sure your glasses just aren't dirty, Ella said? This city gets its electricity from the nuclear power plant. In fact, 20% of all the electricity in the U.S. comes from nuclear energy. That is thanks to Dr. Henry T. Sampson, who invented the gamma electric cell, which makes it possible to convert nuclear radiation into electricity. Ella looked at me. How come you didn't know that, Thomas Nerdison? I shrugged. Good question. Why didn't I? Speaking of Thomas Edison, Mr. Mitel said, you ever hear of Granville T. Woods? Ella and I shook our heads. He was known as the Black Thomas Edison because of all his inventions. In fact, Edison even tried to hire Woods. Alexander Graham's Bell, Graham Bell's company bought Woods's telegraphy invention. Mr. Mitel flicked the light switch off and on. Black electricity. Black electricity, Ella chuckled. She grabbed my journal out of my hands and started scribbling notes. You are going to love this next part, Mr. Mitel said. He leaned forward as if he was about to tell us a deep, dark secret. Ella and I leaned forward, too, listening. He picked up a broom in each hand and tossed them to us. Get to work. He walked out of the room, but we could hear his laughter echoing in the hallway. As soon as he was gone, I grabbed my journal back from Ella and started writing down everything he told us. You're crazy if you think I'm doing all the sweeping while you scribble away, Ella said. I don't want to forget what he just said. I want to find out more later. She snorted and started sweeping, then stopped and snapped her fingers at me. Give me some paper, too just to make sure you get it right. Dr. Henry T. Sampson, born 1934, Gamma Electric Cell. Ella's Fast Facts. There are 442 nuclear power reactors in the world. 104 of them are in the United States. These reactors provide 14% of the world's electricity and 20% of the U.S.'s energy. Dr. Henry T. Sampson is just as much an action hero as the muscle-bound Sampson from the Bible. Born in Mississippi in 1934, Dr. Sampson was the first African-American to earn a Ph.D. in nuclear engineering, which he did in 1967. In 1971, he invented something called the gamma electric cell, which converts radiation directly into electricity. It was a big deal, and Dr. Sampson won a bunch of awards for his invention. Here's something interesting about him that has nothing to do with science. He also wrote books and produced documentary films about overlooked African-American filmmakers of the 19th and 20th centuries. And here is a picture of Dr. Sampson. Well, that certainly tickled my curiosity. How about you? Just go to the Washoe County Library website to see various ways you can access and read the rest of the book. And when you do, you will read about who invented the ice cream scoop. Who invented the refrigerated truck and railroad cars so food could be transported farther distances without spoiling? And who invented the blood bank? Kareem writes about 15 more inventors in this book. Thank you for joining me, and I hope you have a great rest of your day today. Bye!